Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm JJ, your host, and our guest today is directly from Hong Kong. It's Alex, the managing director of Bamboo International. Bill will focus on three main topics with Alex today. The first one is his startup, a Bamboo International Group. The second one is uh, the Bamboo Carbon Cycle. And the third one, um, they will be, or Bamboo International will be in Germany next week at the European Bamboo Expo. So um, we'll get maybe some insights from Alex um, uh, what to expect. And um, this is a great preparation for anybody interested into uh, working or possibly working with Bamboo International. Uh, so uh, you know already a little bit more than when you're at the expo uh, visiting the stand. Yeah, so um, welcome, Alex, to the show. Thank you for being here. Good evening, JJ. Good morning. <laughs> Good evening. Good morning. So, Alex, maybe um, you can give us a, a, like a, a short uh, intro journey of um, how uh, you, you came to the Bamboo uh, universe, because this is like your second, um, you, you already had like a professional, um, um, let's say, life. And this is like your second, uh, af you finished working and you started working again, you, you build a, a startup. So I think this is quite interesting and unique. And, and please share this uh, journey with us here. How, how did this happen? Sure. My name is Alex. I'm from Hong Kong and I am studying training as an architect. My professional career is actually a real estate developer. I've been working in Hong Kong and China, different parts of China. I retired in 2017, and then I started on this bamboo journey in the beginning of 2019. Now it's five years. And, and I have to admit that uh, although I'm an architect by training and a developer, I don't really have a lot of knowledge in bamboo until I was introduced to the material after my retirement. I think bamboo is a very, very interesting material. And I think bamboo as a business can achieve uh win-win both environmentally for sure and then financially and also socially that that's how i look at it i think it's a very interesting um uh, proposition now um when when I, I see ourselves as a startup in the beginning so how i we our vision our dream is we're trying to build uh, a whole cycle of bamboo industrial chain all the way from bamboo plantation to uh, the end product to the end users and customers. And, and on this more kind of basic uh, industrial chain from plantation, harvest, industrial. Hi. Hi. We, we have another joint venture, as I mentioned, which is focused on research. And one of the key uh, research topic that we have is to upcycle bamboo waste. Now, uh, we have already reached, I think, a very promising breakthrough in the labs uh, stage, which we can upcycle bamboo waste to form a um, basic bamboo board. The size that we have achieved so far is about 300 millimeter times 200 millimeter, which is very promising, not so like to the scale. Yeah. Yeah, a proper rectangular bamboo board, right? Yeah. Not to the size yeah. that normally that we can apply in buildings, but I think it's a very promising uh, progress that it, at least it tells us that we know how, what it takes to grow through the process. Now the next stage is we're trying to upscale it to a more industrial scale. If we are successful in this second mm -hmm. phase, that means we can really uh, complete kind of the second loop. We were really able to complete the second loop in, in what I mentioned in the beginning. So one is the bamboo harvest, uh, additional carbon absorption, industrial driven. Now is on the, the other end, tail end, with the bamboo products reaching its useful life, become waste, and then we upcycle into bamboo board, which and uh, we can use. A question, Alex. So you, you upcycled used bamboo from uh, 
whatever it could be a bamboo uh what is it like a roof or a, a wall or or bamboo furniture or are you upcycling specific or bamboo raw bamboo now uh in hong kong there's a unique bamboo application is we use bamboo pole as the building scaffolding which is unique in hong kong you don't see it anywhere okay, in the world yeah, yeah outside so we upcycling this bamboo pole into bamboo board this is the first stage and then if mm. this being successful okay, yeah. we can yeah we can have momentum on on on, on the whole on, on the whole process then we will move forward to try to upcycle bamboo furniture, bamboo wall, bamboo ceiling, flooring, you know, whatever they are. So so that's where we mm -hmm. are right now. So it's encouraging, it's promising. Pretty exciting. I'm, I'm sure it's a lot of material they use for scaffolding. Um, I've seen some photos. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I can tell you a kind of a number to put in the context. Although Hong Kong is a small place, but mm -hmm. every year we consume about 5 million pieces of bamboo pole and scaffolding. So now wow. they all end up and in landfill. Pole being three to six meter long or how, yeah, about that. what size do yeah, the about that. standard about that. poles three, have? Three, four, about, about three to five meter long per piece. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, it, it's a lot. Five million. Yeah. Wow. And that's, of course, yeah. would, would make sense to use that material if it's already there. If you have the fabric there locally, this would be like local. Yeah. You wouldn't ha even have to ship it from mainland China. So no. you save that no. and the, the landfill has more space then because yeah. they don't have to fill that with bamboo. Uh, so everybody's yeah. happy. Yeah, that, that's the idea. That's <laughs> cool. the idea. That's the idea. That's the idea. That's the second joint venture. Now we have a third cool. joint venture, which kind of is kind of putting this together. Is now uh, people are buying bamboo. I think one of the consideration is it's green, it's sustainable, it have carbon absorption. Now what we're trying to propose is, if you are buying bamboo from us, Bamboo International, what we can offer you is an integrated solution. What I call now mm -hmm. we'll having the product, whatever that is, furniture, you know, flooring, whatever that is. But same time, since we are integrating upward to the raw material and bamboo forest, now your 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 the products the products that you are buying actually generate demand for harvesting bamboo, which, as I mentioned earlier, that can create additional carbon absorption. So there are certain ISO standard to access uh, what could be the, the additional carbon dioxide absorption in the process. So, so basically, you look at the whole picture, you buy the product, and at the same time, we can offer you the carbon dioxide offset that your product actually generate because it generate new demand for bamboo and it enable a timely harvest in bamboo. So it's a kind of very exciting kind of integrated solution. You're not just buying the product, you are helping us to generate more carbon dioxide absorption right at the beginning, right? So it's yeah, an exciting proposition that, that, yeah, that is what, what, I'm, what we're trying to achieve. Pretty interesting, yeah, yeah, because uh, it's 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 circular at the end, right? Also, so uh, so part of the yeah. circular economy you you mentioned earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, like exactly. So so yeah, so when you buy our product, you're also contributing directly to more carbon dioxide absorption because we harvest the bamboo for your product and then we plant new bamboo and the new bamboo would generate more carbon absorption on the same area of land. So that that is uh, what we would want to achieve. But that is a more kind of midterm solution. The reason why I say that is uh, bamboo carbon offset is still kind of not recognized in the international system, no matter it's a 
Vera standard or the gold standard. So it will take time, but I think at least uh, we have the ISO standard to calculate yeah. the potential carbon offset and hopefully uh, it, it, it can be done in the future. So what happened now is we kind of, we give the carbon dioxide to our customers. We can, we can do that. Although we can't, we can we cannot trace them. We cannot trade them for money, but it is, it can be verified and ordered by a third party consultant using ISO standard. It's still there. We do not trade them. That's, that's okay. Yeah. But we, we, we will give it as part of the complete package when we sell bamboo. So, so that is, what we're looking at in a kind of a midterm, maybe not now, a few years down the road. So, so that is, you know, how we try to really create a complete cycle end to end. And we are creating three joint venture that tackle different aspects of that cycle, circular structure. And hopefully in a few years time, that will all fall into place. So, so that is our, our vision. And that's what we're trying to do. Sounds really uh, interesting. I like uh, even the the what you mentioned regarding the the upcycling. Uh, I think it's the first time I I heard this uh, approach, and it absolutely makes sense. I mean, being in Hong Kong, having all this what is it five million um, bamboo poles Jesus. every year, yeah, um, yeah, which basically just get used once and then they throw it away. Uh, hey, the material is there. Um, the question here, probably my question would be, why hasn't anybody done or thought about this idea before? <laughs> what's the challenge? Mm -hmm. What's the challenge there? <laughs> well, I think the challenge is how you treat the bamboo waste and then how to put them together without using adhesive. So we, we have a kind of a treatment process to treat the bamboo and then we can make them to come together. We actually, this process is, uh, we have a pattern on this and actually we won an international award on this invention. So, so it, it, it takes a little bit of kind of invention to go through the process. So hopefully, yeah, we, we can pull this off. Okay, if you, if you have the IP rights, that's, uh, that should help a lot for sure. Maybe you can even yeah, sell yeah. The, the IP rights to other uh, places so they can use it too then. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, we, we will certainly will share that. Uh, as long as we have that, you know, all in place, I think we, we love to share that. Awesome, awesome. Pretty, pretty interesting approach there, um, Alex, really. Um, um, and I, I think it's also the right thing to do with the carbon cycle where you say, well, we can't sell the, the carbon cycle yet, but we give it kind of as added value to the product. So if somebody buys yeah. a, um, a structural, yeah. um, what is it, a Zeb structural engineered bamboo beam or something like that? Yeah. How, how do you call yeah. it? Yeah. Then the basically yeah. the, the carbon is uh, sequestered in there. And let's say you, you buy, a, was it a thousand kilo or, or f 20,000 yeah. kilo of, of material, this equals so much CO2, which is stored in there, basically, yeah. probably, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think that, that actually okay. will give, it, that will give more reason for people to consider bamboo structure because they have the direct benefit. I mean, especially in the US and Europe, uh, everybody is looking at carbon offset because they need to pay money additional carbon from the business. Mm -hmm. So kind of the carbon offset makes sense to them. And and we have yeah. this third joint venture, we are with we we we, we are making it with a, a environmental consultant and they can undertake the ISO assessment and then we need to look at a third party audit that we can you know package it as a carbon offset bamboo integrated solution to make it really more attractive and and you know we we can be the esg partner to you know end users we can help them on the esg commitment mm -hmm. in the company yeah at the end it's a marketing uh, uh task there how to uh market that the right way so that the the consumers the end clients understand what they're getting 
basically. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mentioned in the beginning, we are looking at a bamboo structure project. And that is the uh, kind of the, the, the idea that we are pushing, promoting to the end user. So if you buy from us the structure element component, we can also put together certain carbon offset from the bamboo that you're buying from us to help your company, mm -hmm. you know, in, in your overall uh, pursuit of carbon neutrality. So uh, I think that that makes it kind of interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, it, you, will you have a stand at the European Bamboo Expo? You mentioned earlier you will not be able to be there yourself. But uh, I assume you'll have uh, part of your team there in Germany next yeah. week. Yeah, yeah, we have a booth there, and uh, my partner will be there, and then we have a representative in Germany, and she will also be there. Awesome. <sighs> JJ, will you be there That's, as well? I will. Okay. Now we're uh, yeah I think we had short connection cut but we're back. Yeah, JJ, will you be there next week? I will not be able to be there. Um, I'm uh, on oh. the other side of the globe too, uh, so um, okay. <laughs> I'll join uh, virtually and uh, basically yeah. trying to help with uh, the podcast here. So people who are really uh, want to know yeah. what could be interested interesting and. Um, yeah, so, um, but last year was really very, very exciting. There was lots going on. It was very three yeah. pack days. Uh, the, so many people from everywhere around the world were there. It was really, it was, it was like super, super interesting, really. So it's a really good place to be, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, we, were, we, we went last year and we thought it, Oh, it would be a great idea if we can have a booth in it. Uh, so that's why this year we came and then we have a booth there. Oh, much better. So last year you did not have a booth. No, we did not. Last year we just attend and then we, we find it very interesting and exciting. So this, this year we decided that we should have a booth there. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I'm really glad. Um, I'm, I'm hope, yeah. I hope uh, it... It, you'll have lots of um, uh, visitors there, I'm sure, from the feedback now. People Hopefully. last year and yeah. this year, there'll be more people for sure. Are you going to bring some uh, physical bamboo there or some bamboo scaffolding from Hong Kong maybe? Or uh, what's the plan with the booth? We, we are going to bring... Um, certain examples of uh, based on our research, I think that is more interesting because conventional yes. bamboo products, you have that everywhere in Europe. I think that's not kind of attractive, but we're, we are bringing examples of our upcycled bamboo, how we, what we can do with that. I think these are more exciting. We are, we are also actually, I haven't mentioned, we are uh, having a good breakthrough in uh, inventing the first uh, five research uh, uh, bamboo uh, biochart. It can actually it can survive sixty minutes plus uh, burning at a degree bamboo between fiber? 800 to one thousand degree. So I think this is the first of its kind, and it's very exciting. If we put that out, we can do a hundred percent bamboo fado up to sixty minutes fire rating. Alex, sorry, um, now we had a longer interruption. You mentioned bamboo fiber? Far... No, no, oh. fire door. So basically, we, we just have a breakthrough, which we turn bamboo into bamboo bow chart. And that bow chart, uh, we make it in such a way that it can have a very strong fire resistant property. So fire resistant. nowadays, yes, that's important. Fire resistant. Yeah. Yeah, so, yes. so nowadays, yeah. fire-resistant properties is usually by 
either it's a mineral base or metal base material. There isn't any bio based material. And, and it's I believe time, right? We, it's 30 yeah. minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes at the end, something like that, or yeah, more, 120. We, 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 yeah, we're doing up to 60 minutes now, but it's already it's the first in the market. So we will bring a, sm a small sample wow. of that bio chart to Germany. So uh, if we can achieve that, it will be the first fully bio-based, fire-resistant panel. Exciting. That's exciting. And, and so compared to no fire resistance, to fi I mean, bamboo burns very well. <laughs> I use it here also. Uh, because it, it yeah. we can make charcoal with bamboo and all that, and it makes less smoke. But um, basically, how do you achieve the fire resistance of, of 60 minutes? Um, you said minerals or resins? No, actually, it's they all bamboo. Basically, uh, when we uh, go through the kind of the process of preparation of the bamboo biochar, we control the temperature and we control the air mix, and we control the time in such a way, the structure of the bamboo biochar uh, has a superior fire resistance than the normal biochar. The normal biochar, it, it can't survive 800 degrees to 1000 degrees. It's about 500, 400. I think that, that's more about it. But our biochar, mm -hmm. because it's kind of, prepared in a way, it can have a structure that offer very, very high fire resistance. And and now we're trying to go through the process to patent that because we, we believe this is the kind of the first in the market. Exciting, exciting time. Absolutely. I mean, super exciting. I mean, doors, uh, lots of applications which really rely on yeah. fire resistance, uh, depending on what yeah. you need, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. that's, the, that's what I always said. Your your product need to fulfill certain functionality and at a very competitive price so that you can be a really viable alternative. That meaning that you don't need to pay really a lot a lot more money to go green to be, you know, to contribute to the environment. So I think we, we need to work from our side to create things like this. So it has the functionality. You need that in your daily lives, but it's also green, sustainable, low carbon. I think that that is our mission. We don't want to tell you, JJ, please pay another what, thirty percent if you want to go green. I mean that that's not how it goes. That's not how it works. Yeah, no, that's not not so cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So but that's fingers crossed. So you have fingers a, crossed. A few... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you have a few um, like uh, own uh, IP um, intellectual property um, um, approaches here, which um, is uh, on the long run for sure very uh, promising as company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's still in the beginning, but it, we, we hopefully we, we're seeing progress. I think that's exciting. That's the important thing, the, the, aiming the, the, the goal and, and having results where uh, you see that it's getting better and better, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and um, so regarding the, the market right now where you, you um, will uh, produce all those, those uh, bamboo um, things are... Are you focusing on like outside of of Asia, or is it like more like the the, the Asian market? If you look at the market right now, there are three uh, geographic locations with the biggest demand for bamboo products. One, China for sure. The other is the United States, and then the Europe. So these are the three mm -hmm. major three market. market for bamboo. Yeah, and, and we believe this they will continue to be the major markets for bamboo products. Yeah, currently. And what about India? Is like they have own bamboo. They're not yet uh, 
consuming uh, importing bamboo from from outside no uh, they are not but um, uh, honestly I, I haven't really spent time uh, to look at India or Southeast Asia yet so uh, with our limited resources our focus is to develop China Europe and the US so so that is our current focus if we are making certain head you know head start in these locations, we may want to look at somewhere else, but, but I think we, we have enough on our plate right now. I, I think so too. I have another um, practical question. You mentioned the structural engineered bamboo uh, beams, which um, if I recall correctly, the, they're common sizes of three, six meters, and you mentioned a, a bigger number. Um, how, how long can, they, can you make them? Uh, we, we can make them up to 15 meters in length in one piece. How long? Uh, 15 meters. Sorry, 15 meters. 15 meters. Wow, that's 15 yeah, meters. Five, okay, yeah. that's, that's not bad. What, one five. Yeah. yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah. That's huge. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, then the, you need the 15, is there the long container? Uh, um, is 15 meter long, right? That's why the 15 meters no, maybe. No, no, no. Now, typically, typically, structural engineer will ask for 12 meter span. And a 40 foot container can mm -hmm. just house a 12 meters long uh, bamboo beam inside. So, so basically, we're sticking to 12 meter long. Uh, the engineering requirement and it can fit into a 40 foot container 15 meters too long to fit into any container so <laughs> oh okay but it's an interesting <laughs> detail right because you have to focus on yeah. industrial standards so the container size is kind yeah. of the the size yeah. that probably will yeah. have more uh more use and and probably the 15 meters you will have to ship them like separately without a container which would be kind of much more expensive probably um exactly or exactly. by helicopter exactly. who knows how <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay but it's interesting maybe locally maybe locally yeah, no, but it's yeah. in, locally who knows yeah um but it's an yeah. interesting um thing because of yeah. course if, if you have to do connectors however you do them um you well it's I mean, 50 meters, you have to do connectors anyway, probably because you lose like the the the, the strengths yeah. also of the material or yeah. the beam, right? It starts to probably uh, vibrate and, and move more than just with yeah. 6 or 12 or I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Correct. That's interesting. Now, now in, in, a and, and in a discussion you, you, with the engine. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, please. You go. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, JJ. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, uh, regarding the structural um, engineered bamboo beams. So basically, um, you they're all bamboo slices right now, and you glue them together, and and uh, with pressure, right? And some mm -hmm. um, you use. Do you use any uh, like? Because there's several techniques to do that, right? Like one is uh, steam pressure and and glue or resins. So I don't know um, how how do you make them? Those um, we use glue and pressure. Glue and pressure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is kind of a new, like an, a newer idea, right? Because before there were like the the the, the same idea with wood or timber, like the little blocks, and then like stick together. And now yeah. with bamboo, uh, it, it, the, the the result is very different than with wood, of course, because it's a total different material. It's basically yeah. pieces of grass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've I've seen um, also um, furniture uh, with um, the similar method. Um, somewhere mm. which was quite um interesting also because if if you want like a flat bamboo a table 
you need the same uh, um, you need to have the same similar material you have to glue together pieces and then like um, um, press it flat basically else you yeah. will never have a flat bamboo table <laughs> it's not gonna yeah. happen right <laughs> Yeah, the, the process is basically the same is glue and uh, pressure. That's why we call glue lamp bamboo, mm -hmm. similar to glue lamp timber. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of similar process. It, it's just because of the limitation of bamboo, the, 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 the trick is how do you connect the different bamboo together horizontally and uh, in the long direction, how to make a longer piece or a broader piece. I think the kind of the connection be, between the bamboo pieces is important. And, and we have certain uh, patent uh, technique to connect them so that we can form a bigger width and a longer length. I think that that is, as I mentioned in the beginning, kind of the research that yeah. we believe in, the, yeah, the research that we put it in the factory so that we can make, you know, kind of, better products, we can be more flexible to deliver a different design from the designer, architects, or end users. And you mentioned earlier you work with the ISO standards. So basically, uh, your um, structural engineered beams are, have a ISO standard, like a number, I don't know what, um, is, is that correct? Now, uh, it's different. It, it really depends. Uh, it, we, we, we mostly follow the, the local regulatory standard. Uh, sometimes they do not use the ISO. So we, we, we would try to follow the local standard. In China, they have the Chinese standard. Say in Hong Kong, they have the British standard. And in Europe, they have the EN standard. And then in the US, they have the ASTM. So, so typically, we need to follow the local standard. So the same performance we have to do one, two, three, four, four tests <laughs> in the different local standard. We, wow. we tell them we we can fulfill your requirements. So it's a little wow. bit kind of you know clumsy, but this is how we how it works. Yeah. Okay, but it's good to know. So whatever wherever you are, <laughs> if you are in the US, in Europe, or in China, you yeah. have the 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 <laughs> industrial standard. You have it. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a lot of paperwork, yeah. I imagine, but it's it's good yes. to know. Yeah, say for, for <laughs> example, the health, the the the, the VOC emission is important, right? So you have the EN standard mm -hmm. on yeah. emission, you have the Guobiao China standard emission, you have the British standard emission, then you have a, a US standard on emission. And actually, they're looking the same thing, <laughs> but we have to do four tests. Four times, wow. wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's international now business we, today, right? It's, it's, it's. Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I would wish JJ they all follow the ISO standard. That one standard is okay, <laughs> but this is not what's happening now. I, I just, we are just looking at a project in Singapore. They're asking us for the fire mm -hmm. performance. We give them a yen standard. We give them a British standard. But the Singapore architect told us, sorry, you need a local Singapore standard. You need to look for a lab in Singapore to do the same test for you again. Although we know that your material is okay because you have the yen standard, you have the British standard. Yeah, yeah that's how it works. That's how it works. Yeah, but at the yeah. end, I mean, at, of course, the, the idea there is, is to, to work with safe products and, and, and safe construction. So it yeah. makes sense, but it's, it would make even more sense to have one worldwide standard, of course, but uh, yeah, Absolutely. who knows when we will get there, right? <laughs> well, hopefully, Inbar can help us. Inbar can organize an ISO standard. That, that's I would I would count on <sighs> Inbar. Inbar to help us. <laughs> I think you can help us to promote nice, as well, JJ, to Inbar. Please, Inbar, help us. Help, help, yeah, you, we help, have to help talk you know, to people in the industry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have to talk to them. Yeah, we also like building standard codes and stuff like that. We should have like a global bamboo building standard code, which any uh, yeah. uh, country should be able to embed into their national uh, standard building code, ideally. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Now it's yeah. not happening, so it's a little bit clumsy, but we are okay. We 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 can cope. Yeah, that's the important part that uh, you have the 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 knowledge of how to uh, do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Um, yeah. So you were saying. Um, explaining something else before and I interrupted you um, was it regarding the um, fire I talked about that um, you remember what it was <laughs> uh, I think we covered that I think it's fire we covered that afterwards yeah we covered the fire I think, yeah, yeah I think it's yeah I think it's fire we covered that afterwards what do you have any experience regarding humidity and, and and that stuff is that any different than uh, than wood with bamboo is it like a, a complicated topic or is it not an issue at all it's an issue because bamboo is grass is actually more uh exposed to moisture and it would develop more more readily than wood than timber i think that's one of the uh major weakness of bamboo if you like so now we need to treat mm. the bamboo with certain chemicals to prevent the mold being developed now one one uh method is is basically uh the 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 some kind of chemical will uh submerge into the bamboo to fill out kind of the air gap uh near the kind of the surface because you need water and air to develop mm -hmm. more. If they kind of occupy all the air gap, that means even water go in, it will not develop more. But um, the unfortunate thing is all this treatment for the time being, uh, they are not bio-based chemicals, but we don't have anything better for the time being. Hopefully we can have something developed that's kind of more natural, more bio-based, to do the job. At the moment, it's not perfect. We're doing it right now because we need to handle the mold kind of issue. So, so yeah, we can handle it, but not the most ideal way. But it's an interesting uh, um, um, topic, I think, uh, even more in, in probably less in, in Europe, um, depending on the humidity, right? But there are regions with, which have more humid, like Florida or Miami, probably uh, is more humid kind of stop. than uh, New York or uh, Washington. JJ, you need to rephrase it. I, I, I kind of I lose you a little bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. So um, I, I was um, thinking that depending on the region, the humidity is different. For example, in um, in in Florida and Miami, it's it's more humid. It's more tropical like climate, and probably in Washington or New York, there is like it's cold in winter, but it's not humid. It's more dry weather. Absolutely, absolutely. I can tell you, uh, Hong Kong is the worst. Hong Kong is the we worst. Have a lot of humidity because of the sea. Yeah, we have ninety-nine degree humidity in the summer. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a yeah. lot. And then Europe, wow. as you said, okay. Europe is better. Europe's kind of cool and dry, so it's actually better for bamboo. So as long as we can deal with that in Hong Kong, we can handle it anywhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that's a testing uh, place. That's pretty good. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Correct. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, but it's good yeah. to know. I think uh, maybe not everybody knows about the the humidity um, challenge with bamboo. Um, and as you said, if if you have a better solution uh, in the long term in the future, then um, like very strong uh, chemicals, maybe some natural salts like the borax uh, bamboo curing approach yeah. which is like more natural because it's just the salt um yeah, yeah. so uh, let's hope there for the best <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um 
do you have any um i mean you already you, you've done so much in like since uh, 2019 and we're in 2024 so in, in five years uh, it seems like this startup has already achieved a lot to be honest um but do you have um like other uh, future plans you, you can share um with us here now regarding um maybe um like uh Uh, things you're working on with bamboo um which uh you think are are uh, uh worth sharing regarding future yeah. plans yeah i think i think uh there are two areas we really want to uh make good progress in the next two to three years one is bamboo structure That's why Joe is coming to Germany to try to uh, share our expertise and experience in bamboo structure. And hopefully we can meet some like-minded people in Germany to promote that. And then we're also expanding that concept in China as well. Because China is quite receptive of a bamboo structure for kind of mid kind of high buildings, a few story high building. That's one. The other is, I just mentioned about the new uh, research material, upcycle bamboo, bamboo fire door. So, so these, mm -hmm. these are actually will be the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the priority that we, we set ourselves for the next two to three years. We, we really want to uh, productize them to, you know, to really expand this Uh, products in the market. Okay, so basically, you're you're going to Germany and are seeking for um, maybe even a, a, a collaboration with some uh, German organization or group or startup yeah. regarding. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Definitely. Okay, so we can make a, a, a shout out here to uh, any um, people who are going to go on at the European Bamboo Expo and are um, have knowledge in in, uh, in in this direction, right? Should talk to you or should talk yeah. to uh, the Bamboo yes. National uh, team uh, at the European Bamboo Expo next week. Yeah, hopefully, yes, we we look forward to that. Cool, cool, fantastic. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. Alex, I think um, that we had a, a little challenge here with uh, our uh, internet connection, but I, I hope uh, the the result will be uh, will be good. <laughs> Thank you, JJ. Look forward to the chance to see you in person. I would love to absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Take Thank care. You. Bye bye. bye. Bye-bye.